good morning good morning team thank good you morning. for joining in today morning to attend an interesting session organized by motivus consulting uh, motivus consulting is a singapore headquartered company serving worldwide please join me in welcoming mr amit prakash who is a founder lead trainer and consultant with motivus amit is an international business trainer speaker and consultant with over 15 plus years of quality experience Amit has led and trained teams in sales, marketing, customer service, revenue, loyalty, and brands across portfolio of luxury, upscale, and boutique brands. He has conducted training and motivating sessions for his customers in globally renowned brands like the Hilton, Marriott, Intercontinental, and Millennium Hotels and Resorts. Academically, he holds a Master of Business Administration specializing in marketing and a bachelor's degree in hospitality and tourism management. Amit is also the founder of Motivus Consulting and partner of Revomix Solutions in complete uh, business training and consulting services. Huh? On a personal note, Amit enjoys traveling and is a foodie. Convincing him to do this training session for us was not difficult as he readily agreed. As ITC Hotels and its fine cuisine, through its iconic brands like Bukhara, Dampuk, Dakshin, uh, Pan Asian has always, has always been his favorite. Uh, two important points before we start, uh, team. Uh, please uh, note all the questions will be addressed, all your questions will be addressed. Uh, however, Amit will try and pause to address these questions uh, one by one. Please mention these questions in the chat box. Secondly, kindly mute all your microphones. So, ladies and gentlemen, join me in welcoming Amit Prakash. And uh, he has, uh, you know, he has curated a special session for us uh, this morning. And the topic is COVID-19, an opportunity to pause, uh, plan, and uh, play. Over to you, Amit. First of all, namaste to all of you guys. And I think a big round of applause for Jyoti, because I think I need to learn uh, my introduction from you, it was so nice and so well done. So thank you so much for that. And uh, so moving on, first of all, I will go and share my screen. I've uh, prepared a little presentation for you guys, exclusively for you guys. And uh, so far I can see 53 participants on board. So we will take on from here. So let me share my screen with you. I hope all of you can see my screen. Yes, Amit. All right, perfect. So without uh, further ado, I will start. So basically, we're in a very interesting phase right now. COVID-19 from the family of coronavirus has impacted the whole world. As per World Health Organization, total number of confirmed positive cases have crossed 3.2 million and total number of deaths reported so far is 225,000 and even more. It's so tragic. But hopefully we all are playing our part in eradicating COVID-19 by staying home, wearing masks, volunteering and donating to help healthcare professionals and people in need. Let's now look at some global and some Indian statistics of how COVID-19 is going to impact our industry, which is, tour which is tourism industry. Global revenue loss of about 2.1 trillion in revenue is expected from travel industry alone. Global loss of about 50 to 75 million jobs is projected. It's going to take up to 10 to 12 months for us to recover from this crisis. And not to forget, tourism industry accounts for about 10% of global GDP. If I say precisely, it's about 10.3% now. Now let's look at some key facts 
and the impact COVID-19 is going to make to our industry in India alone. So in the India's tourism, which is inbound tourism is about uh, $28 billion. If we see a drop in tourist arrival from 1.4 billions in 2019 to 1.02 billions in 2020, it's to the level of 2012. So almost taking us back by eight years, massive impact. Now, if we look at the previous global crisis that has impacted the Indian market, 9-11 impact was about 0.1%. Subprime crisis, also known as global financial, financial crisis, was about 4%. But COVID-19 is expected to make an impact of about 30 to 40%. And that's huge. 70% of tourism workforce will lose employment, which is about 3.8 crores out of 5.5 crores. I'm happy to know that uh, our colleagues uh, uh, in ITC are pretty much safe, and, but it's not the case everywhere. So if we look at the whole industry, it's, it's definitely in a dire situation right now. Indian GDP is about $2.75 trillion and tourism as such accounts for 10%, which makes it about $275 billion. Even if we take 30%, which is the baseline of expected drop, we are at risk of about 5 lakh crores. And that's a lot of money to lose. So what does that mean? And what question it raises is, will we survive coronavirus? Will we overcome the impact of coronavirus? The answer is yes, we will survive coronavirus. We will overcome the impact of coronavirus. I think the more important question here is how, how we are going to survive, how we are going to overcome this crisis, which has been the biggest in the history of humankind so far. Like this positive, creative and dedicated wedding couple who is going to start their new life in this pandemic stage, we as sales professionals should be thinking very positively, very creatively on how to get business in every situation possible, even during the pandemic and immediately after the pandemic. And that's the reason I have divided it into three stages. So I call it COVID-19, an opportunity to pause, plan, and play. So while we pause, it's a great opportunity for us to spend quality time with our loved ones, with our friends, with our family, but of course, indoors and through virtual medium, which we have been longing for years. Like if you ask me, I'm staying at home after almost 15, 16 years for so long. I've always been staying for like five days, six days, and that's it. But this is a great time to enjoy with friends, with families, but maintaining social distance, yet this is also a great opportunity to look at your current sales strategy and see what's going to work out going forward and what's not going to work out. And what's going to work out, we have to continue doing it. And what's not going to work out, what's not going to be relevant going forward, we have to stop and start embarking on the new sales strategy journey. Uh, Amit, yeah. um, hello, just, just one second. Uh, since you're the host now, uh, you know, I'm not able to see the participants uh, in the waiting uh, room. So would, would you be able to just uh, admit all of them? Yeah, sure, let me see. Okay, I have three of them.
I see 55 now. Yeah, 55 participants. Anyone else? Mm. Can, you, can you please, everyone, mute your line? Jyoti, can I start now? Yes, yes, please. Yes. All right. So, a um, couple of weeks back when the COVID-19 situation was fresh and new, I had published two articles and uh, taking reference from those two articles, I'm going to share some of the creative and some yet workable conventional sales strategies that could be planned right now, that could be implemented during the pandemic stage. Plus, there are some strategies, some sales tips that could be immediately, immediately after market opens. So even if it opens in phases, it's good to be implemented. And I think this session is going to give you some food for thought for brainstorming and ideating some more strategies and tips that you would like to implement in your portfolios with your own customers. So moving on, uh, I will start with uh, the sales tips that could be implemented during COVID-19. So number one, current emergency operating opportunities. Convert and offer your hotel as a hospital service, testing centers, medical staff stays, government quarantine, stay home notices, first day of government officials on duty, and even for selling or barter with media companies who are still working for their employees who are on field and who are away from their own locations. I'm happy to know that uh, Grand Maratha, I think, has already been offered for one of such uses, but there are many more opportunities that could be looked at during this pandemic stage. Number two, sell your hotel to stranded tourists with packages including meals, spa, etc. And for this, you will have to reach out to each and every embassy, high commission, destination management companies and see where these guests are. Some of them are already stay staying somewhere and uh, some of them are in alternate accommodation, but they all want a safe, hygienic accommodation space and reaching out to each of them will give us some piece of business out of that. I think there's someone else who is in the waiting room. One more. Sorry for the interruption. All right, so moving on. Number three, sell your hotel to project business, long stay guests who cannot really go back due to long lockdown. And again, they're either staying in some of the hotels or they're staying in some alternate accommodation due to this current unhygienic and inappropriate environment. They are, they are all looking at places which are safe and secured and hygienic for them to stay. These are the guests who could be targeted and we need to have a very strong market intelligence in finding them where they are and how we can get them to us. Number four, sell your hotel to international and domestic cargo companies because some of these cargo companies are still working to transport emergency and need-based products. So we need to be very specific on finding out who are these cargo companies who are traveling, who are still uh, flying and doing business. We need to be in touch with them to get their piece of business. There are Walmarts, there are other um, companies who can provide you business in terms of transporting emergency goods from other countries like from China or from other international locations, goods are coming in and that's where we can, and even domestic within, within the country, 
It's the domestic cargo which is operating and they can give us some piece of business. This is interesting. You can sell your hotel rooms, banquets, restaurants, spa, etc., as gift vouchers to corporates and social guests with longer validity, which could be redeemed even after COVID-19. After a couple of weeks of publishing my article, I could see a company based on my research, which has already started to sell hotel credit. And they are helping hotels to gain working capital to gain cash flow to stay afloat during this pandemic period. And this can be a gift voucher that they can use whenever they want with a very unlimited, with a very free kind of uh, uh, no terms and conditions offer. So what they're doing is uh, for $100 spent, they're giving a credit of $150 and in multiples of that. I think some of the uh, good hotel companies and hotels are already on board with it. Uh, I could see on their website 30 hotels already listed. So some of the hotels have great opportunity on doing that as well. Selling food and drinks through home delivery. I can see this already being a hit in Delhi and Mumbai market. Some of the hotels uh, have already started to make more than five lakhs a day just with home delivery of food and beverages. And uh, which they were not even making when the restaurant was open for public and in the in inward dining. There is another example of Otako Veda uh, Bar in Maryland, which is thriving with cocktail deliveries. So we need to be creative on what we can sell, how we can sell in terms of making some money to stay afloat during this COVID-19 pandemic. Number seven. Sell vouchers through e-commerce platforms like Amazon, eBay, Cred app, etc. I understand that we're already selling our hotel rooms and other features and facilities through OTAs and brand website, but this is the time that we need more and more sales channels to be helping us sell our hotel services and products. And people are spending a lot of time on e-commerce, which is going to be super, super important going forward. I'm personally implementing a lot of these strategies already with my cons consulting customers. So I think uh, this is making some success stories already. Number eight, sell meeting rooms to guests for online meetings, example, Zoom, Skype, et cetera. Uh, this is something which is for your in-house guests plus your other companies who are looking at a safe and hygienic place to do meetings, which is of course the virtual meeting. There are trainers and speakers like us who are hiring hotels and, and meeting rooms and, and doing their uh, virtual workshops and uh, uh, online programs like this. Number nine, barter with influencers, critiques, etc., for positive marketing. This is something which we can use and get some positive marketing out of it for ensuring that our customers are going to have trust in us, continued trust in us, um, because these are the influencers, whatever they write, whatever they say, whatever they talk, people are going to follow them. It could be a barter opportunities of unused rooms, which we're anyways not selling, and we can barter it with them and they can help us do positive marketing. Number 10. Launching some limited time promotions. Uh, one of them is uh, pay now, use later, where you can offer discounted price for your rooms, banquets, meeting rooms, restaurants, spa, et cetera, on advanced purchase basis. And um, let me share, there's another new website which has been created very recently, which is called buy now, stay later. And that's exactly following promotions like this, where they have, about 50 plus hotels already listed where they are asking public to buy hotel rooms and meeting rooms now, which they can use in future. This is definitely going to help us have some working capital. Installment plan is the next one where we can offer installment plan to start paying now and use later. This strategy has already been super successful with luxury uh, retail uh, companies, which I'm working with, and uh, I've already started to implement this with 
my hotel consulting companies. So you get as much from your losses as you do from your victory. So as Oprah Winfrey says, you get as much from your losses as you get from your victories. And with that inspiration, I would like to share some of the sales tips that we can implement immediately after the COVID-19 pandemic or even the market starts to open in batches and not fully altogether. So moving on, definitely the number one has to be to win guest confidence. This is super important. This is the first and foremost thing to do. How we can do it is definitely through social media, through videos, through influencers, through emails and, and calls with bookers and procurement head. We need to start building the confidence that our hotel is hygienic, safe, and secure for their guests and for them to stay. Number two is to expand or add source markets. Many of our hotels, many of our uh, markets have been thriving on European, American, Australian, Japanese, these key markets so far. And uh, they've been doing good business, so it was never uh, an urgency to look at uh, alternative source markets for getting business. So this is the time that we need to get more and more sources of markets to get business. And let me give you an example. It could be, for example, Singapore market where I am based. Uh, it's the gateway of uh, Asia Pacific. And uh, if you do not have a strategy in place because most of the companies have got their APAC headquarters and decisions are being made there or it's being influenced from, from Singapore market, if you increase your activity over there, if you have not been doing it, it's going to be helpful in terms of getting more business. So adding source market is definitely going to be very, very critical. I've already started to implement it with my customers. Number three, renegotiate with existing customers. This is definitely a given fact. It's, it's a no brainer that uh, because of the losses that all our customers have been incurring now, it's more than important ever that we need to sit with them. We need to know what is their strategy going forward, what is going to be their per diem, what is going to be their travel cut and everything based on which we can offer a new package, at least for the short term, could be for six to 12 months before we get back to our normal rates. So renegotiating with existing customers is very important because this is the time that our competition is also looking at our business. Number four, negotiate consolidation of business. That's another important factor because due to the losses that all our existing customers are making, they are going to cut costs, they're going to cut on travel, and if they have three to four hotels listed on their um, RFP, on their, on their local contracting, and if that's further split, it's not going to make sense for any of the hotels. So it's important that this is the time that we start to discuss with them and we start to negotiate consolidation of all of their business, even after dropping in their travel plan, so that one hotel can get some sizable piece of business rather than it being split across. And also, for us, it's important before our competition does so. So it's, it's, it's a high time that we start to do such interaction with our customers. Number five, buyback from hotel suppliers. This is something which has been fruitful for my consulting company so far, is when we reached out, we were thinking whether this will work or not, but we gave it a try and we reached out to our hotel suppliers that you supply us goods and, and services in back to, to some extent, it could be 20%, it could be 30% that you can buy back hotel product and services. It will be helpful for us in terms of combating our expenses. And the hotel suppliers came back saying, okay, we will do it because they will need for their own internal meetings, for their own customer meetings, for their stays, they will need hotel 
products and services. So they have started to buy some of our products and services in lieu of the products and services that they supply us. Number six, work with tourism boards and destination marketing companies. This has become more important than ever now. Even if we are working with one or two tourism boards and, and one or two destination marketing companies, it's important that we expand our arena in this space so that we work with multiple tourism boards and marketing companies to promote not just our hotel, but also our destination so that we can start to get more piece of business. Look at what you have not been getting so far, which tourism board, which country has business but has not been giving you the business so far. Look at all those destination marketing companies that we have not worked with. And that's going to help with some additional piece of business for us. Number seven, promotions and packages. Here I've mentioned a couple of them that can be looked at. Uh, so the first is use now, pay later. This will help companies not to defer their hotel usage and hotels will immediately start to sell as well. Because once we sell, even if we are getting the payment in batches, it's fine because the money is still going to come in because we have already been giving um, credits of 30 days, 60 days. Why can't we extend it with our regular customers for a longer period of time showing that we support them and they can also start to use our facilities without having to wait. And you know, as the hotel product is perishable, if they have waited, we have lost that, man, that many opportunities, which will be, uh, the customers would do virtually, but if we allow such promotions, they would start to use hotels. Next is use now, pay in installment. Same benefit that, uh, the companies will not defer their hotel usage they, because they would want to have control on the expenses in the short run because they are definitely going to incur those expenses in the long term. But whatever they have not spent in short term, it's not going to come back. But if we have helped them with such installment plans, they will come back and start using immediately after the market opens. Now you can say these are some really crazy creative ideas. But until we try, we are, we are not in a, on a demanding side. We are on the side where we need more business, we need more supporters, we need more source markets, we need more people to help us. So trying will definitely help. The next is source market promotions. So the new source markets and the existing source markets that we see, and we have to be very, very smart in understanding what's happening in our source markets how are they performing? How is the travel happening out of those source markets? And then what are the relevant promotions that we can do for those specific source markets like America, Europe, New Zealand, Australia, China, Japan, Singapore, exclusive targeted promotions based on how these markets are responding. Just a second, I think there's someone else wanting to come in. Yeah. Next is need or demand based inclusion. Sometimes what we do is we prepare blanket promotions and we just roll it out to all our customers. And in that there are two risks. One is that maybe that they don't need everything and we are trying to give everything over there. The second is that it may not be relevant for them because it's not customized. So it's important that we go to them. Right now we start doing Zoom meetings and ask them what is going to be their need, how we can add our packaging that can help them to kind of control their cost because not just on per room night basis that they spend, they spend overall, they look at spending on their accommodation, food, transportation, and local allowances, and it could be even more. So once we, start to have a discussion with them then they will tell us that okay this is my overall cost that i'm incurring on each and every guest and then we can see how we can add those low cost products and services which can add big value to our customers and they become loyal to us so customization is the key 
Next is brand website exclusive offer. Now, again, we've been doing brand website uh, offers and exclusive offers. So here it's even more important that we try different options like pay, the, pay to stay three, member extra special rate, extra loyalty programs, etc. So this, is, this has been there forever and uh, this is going to work even going forward. So not creative, but something that's relevant that is going to go forward as well. Number eight, maximize revenue through hotel data analytics. This is the high time now that we start to analyze our data because we have realized that if the data, if hotel facts and figures are not analyzed, a lot of money is being lost. It's being left on the table. It's important that at, in this critical time that we start to analyze our data and there are companies who provide you with data analytics services, dashboard and, um, and how really you can look at those uh, numbers and data. This is going to be super important. They are offering it at a very small price, but it's going to make 100 times of difference when it comes to revenue. Number nine, incentivize your sales partners. And the first one I would like to say is your sales team, uh, because I'm always close to them and always next to them. Someone else wants to join. All right, so when it comes to incentivizing sales partners, the sales team, if and of course, uh, this may not be uh, very relevant to ITC because I understand that uh, uh, it's such a great company that they have not cut salaries, they have not furloughed, they have not uh, laid off people, which is great and, and kudos to the management. And I think this should give us even more confidence in the company and this should make us more passionate and positive in overcoming all the losses that the company will incur because of this pandemic. So incentivize uh, will help definitely because uh, it's going to make your sales team focused on the field. And for other companies where they are even having pay cuts and leave without pays, they will be able to make up for some of the losses that these employees are going to have. And this will help them kind of be more proactive, more creative, more determined in getting more business for us. I mean, sometimes what happens that uh, uh, for big hotels and big brands like ITC, we feel, okay, 10 room nights, 15 room nights, 20 room nights is not important. But going forward, at least for the next two to three years, everything is going to make sense. Even one single room night is going to make a big difference because you never know that one single room night can pay a frontline employee, one employee of one month salary. Just think about it. Incentivizing and again, customized incentivizing of our agent partners like online travel agents, wholesalers, travel management companies and destination management companies is going to be super crucial before other hotel companies start to really embark on this journey. I urge you to, sp to spend time and embark on this journey. It could be a commission percentage basis. It could be a volume based bonus. And I've already started to hear about uh, other hotel companies who have started to discuss this and soon going to implement. Next is of course, bookers offer creative incentive plans to corporate bookers like free room nights, extra loyalty programs, shopping vouchers, these have all been there, but how can we go to the next level and provide them, let's say, an incentive trip once the market recovers, um, a couple's incentive trip, what can we do very differently that can help them in their daily expenses, providing them movie or taxi vouchers could be another great offering that we can look at. So these are just examples I'm just throwing out there but it could be that the team at the, at the hotel level, at the regional sales level, they have to start brainstorming and see what is going to work with their customer. Okay. 
Now, number 10 is collaborate with airlines. This is something that uh, I started to think is going to help really in a big way. Uh, because uh, we have OTAs and wholesalers who do packaging uh, for hotels and airlines and local transportation, but we have never started to embark on the journey of one-on-one -on -one, uh, collaboration of selling each other's services. So why don't we start collaborating with major international and domestic airlines and start to sell our rooms and other products on their website and they can do it vice versa. This is the time to be creative. This is the time to be going out of the box and thinking what really can work. So that's about collaborating with airlines. Number 11, acquire project long stay business, which is a no brainer. It's, it's relevant and it's been relevant ever. It's going to continue even, even further, but time is of essence. If we don't do it right now, if we don't pull our long stay based business from our competition or knowing which company is going to have it in the near future, it's going to be critical. So acquiring project in long stay business, I can give you an example of a Marriott hotel in Dubai, which thrived for more than two months just because of their long stay project business. And they were happily able, able to, without paying, uh, without, without cutting costs, they were able to pay salaries. Number 12, upskill your human capital. This has become super, super critical going forward because once the market opens, it's going to be a big war. It's going to be a fight amongst all the hotels. The luxury hotels will, will start to look at business from mid-scale hotels, mid-scale hotels will try to hop on the budget hotels and vice versa. So this is the right time when we have enough free time, we have all hands available and it could be a virtual training, it could be a small little training every day that you provide, you upskill them exclusively to kind of start fighting for business when the market opens and those skilled people will get you more business and will help you overcome COVID-19 losses sooner than later. Number 13, new market trends. It's going to be very, very critical that we start to be present every day on what's happening within the country, what's happening globally, what are the new market trends coming up, are the pharma companies expanding because they're still selling? Are the warehouse companies expanding because they're still selling? Are the grocery companies expanding because they're still selling? Or because of this, there are virtual e-commerce companies coming up because that's the future, plus present. So what is coming into the market? We need to be very, very updated on what's in the market and, and Embark on that and start getting that business before others start to get it. Number 14 is go local. Of course, due to the travel restrictions and uh, international travel going to take a bit of time and coming when they start coming in batches and not all together, it's all the more important that we start to have our activities even more extensive in the local and domestic market because they will be something that we will need to fill up our hotels in shorter term. In longer term, definitely the international travel and those big MNCs will definitely start to support us, but we cannot deny five room nights, 10 room nights, 15 room nights. And I suggest that look at doing a loyalty programs for SMEs, for smaller companies, as when I was working for Starwood, we used to have SPG business, Stout Preferred Business Royalty Program, which was super great program for these companies. And they were already getting more and more loyal to us before, of course, things changed. Um, so you can look at doing that. So these are some of the tips that uh, I am presenting from my side, but there could be more. This is basically to give you a food for thought on how you can start to brainstorm. Now, going through so many points, you can 
start to brainstorm and think what is going to really work in your portfolio with your customers and you can add more tips, you can add more strategies to this and be successful. Before I finish this part, I would like to show you a video, but then before that, once you brainstorm, when, when you kind of shortlist and, and implement these sales tips and even more that you do it at, our, at your property and your regional and your global level, you will be able to play again. So before taking questions and before um, closing it, this is a beautiful video that I wanted to share as a human being, as a responsible human being to the sales team, which is providing responsible luxury. Tell me the one about the microphone. Yeah, I got it. Right. My boy, you're growing weary. Sleepy thoughts about your head. Please, that one's my favorite. I promise, just for small. Okay, snuggle down, my boy. Though I know you know full well, the story starts before then. In a world I once would dwell. It was a world of waste and wonder, poverty and plenty back before we understood why hindsight is 2020. You see, the people came up with companies to trade across all lands. They swelled and got much bigger than we ever could have planned. We'd always had our wants, but now it got so quick. You could have anything you dreamed of in a day and with a click. We noticed families had stopped talking. That's not to say they never spoke, but the meaning must have melted and the work-life balance broke, and the children's eyes grew square, and every toddler had a phone. They filtered out the imperfections, but amidst the noise, they felt alone. And every day the skies grew thicker, so you couldn't see the stars. So we flew in planes to find them, while down below, we filled our cars. We'd drive around all day in circles. We'd forgotten how to run. We swapped the grass for tarmac, shrunk the parks till there were none. We filled the sea with plastic because our waste was never capped until each day when you went fishing, you'd pull them out, already wrapped. And while we drank and smoked and gambled, our leaders taught us why. It's best to not upset the lobbies. More convenient to die. But then in 2020, a new virus came our way. The governments reacted and told us all to hide away. While we all were hidden, amidst the fear, and all the while, people dusted off their instincts. They remembered how to smile. They started clapping to say thank you and calling up their mums. And while the car keys gathered dust, they would look forward to their runs. And with the skies less full of voyagers, the earth began to breathe, and the beaches bore new wildlife that scuttled off into the seas. Some people started dancing, some were singing, some were baking. We'd grown so used to bad news, but soon good news was in the making. And so when we found the cure and were allowed to go outside, we all preferred the world we found to the one we'd left behind. Old habits became extinct and they made way for the new. And every simple act of kindness was now given its due. But why did it take a virus to bring the people back together? Sometimes you've got to get sick, my boy, before you start feeling better. Now lie down and dream of tomorrow and all the things that we can do. And who knows, if you dream hard enough, maybe some of them will come true. We now call it the great realization and yes, since then, there have been many. But that's the story of how it started and why hindsight's 2020. This is, um, I think, one of the most beautiful and uh, encouraging video that I've seen so far during this home lockdown. Yes. 
that makes us feel that we are responsible citizens, we are responsible salespeople offering responsible luxury. So let's be responsible for our environment and our act as well. With that, I would like to say thank you and then we can take questions. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Amit.